Hello, and welcome to my, like, pre-video disclaimer to clarify for those of y'all who are confused why this is re-uploaded, or those of y'all who are new to my channel after this has been posted and don't know the situation. Um, I, in the previous iteration of this video, I said something bad about Kyle Allen Music that was not fair, and it was misinformation that, um, I had seen and perpetuated without doing my dual due diligence and researching the matter to any reasonable degree. Honestly, this is, I have never been, like, tracked in by fake news or been a uh, fake drama victimized before, uh, but I really wanted to apologize because the first thing, the first time I did, it had some pretty big consequences, um, like me getting banned from his Discord server. And I also wanted to, since I know he'll probably watch this video considering he found the last one, I wanted to extend a personal apology to Kyle Allen Music. Uh, literally the day after I went into your Discord server and spread that misinformation, I felt terrible. I woke up, I wrote an apology, but then I found out that I had been banned, so um, I'm not going to share it here because this is like a very public thing, but uh, you can just, I mean, I don't know if Discord DM me, but um, I don't know. My Discord link is in the description, so if you really want to, you can join my server, and uh, I can send you that apology through a PM. But um, I also wanted to say that even in my music criticism, I hold nothing against you. A lot of this stuff is really old, and when I look up back at stuff I made seven years ago, um, <laughs> it's not good. So hopefully in part two, I'm going to tackle some of your more recent stuff, which I know is a lot better, as I've seen it. Um, and, yeah, I really hope that you cannot dislike me, because I'm not exactly a fan of yours, but I don't, I also don't want to be your enemy, and I don't dislike you as a person. Um, so yeah, sorry Kyle Allen, sorry fans, first piece of internet drama over with, let's hope we can forge a brighter future, something equally cliche. Now, back to me from last week. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to something a little different. I am not very opinionated on this channel, but I am very opinionated in real life, and so I wanted to become more opinionated, starting by absolutely ripping apart my least favorite nerdcore artist, in the manner of someone like CinemaSins, except, uh, really bad. If you don't know what Nerdcore is, it's basically a community of people who are here on YouTube that make some, like, really cool songs. 99% of them are about video games and various uh, things in that property. Uh, you have the really cool ones, like uh, the Stupendium and Dan Bull. You have the, the ones that are pretty okay, like JT Music and DeGames. And then you have the Bottom of the Barrel, or Kyle Allen Music. Uh, he's gained some amount of fame from writing the very, very first Bendy and the Ink Machine song, the video for which is on screen now. But all in all, he's honestly quite overrated. He has several hundred thousand subscribers, and his music kind of sucks. I am a music theorist and musician of 10 years, so I wanted to take a look at this and just break down every single bit of these songs and how they are really bad. They're so bad, guys. This is the aforementioned first Bendy song. It's not actually that bad compared to some of the crap we'll see later, uh, but I do want to note that the fact that there are no on-screen captions is annoying because you don't know what he's saying half the time. Later on, Finn would regret that statement, seeing as what the videos with captions are like. And one day you pull the spring. First gripe, here we go. So he says, pulled the spring here, but this makes no sense in any in-game or technical sense. There is no mechanism, both in Bendy and the Ink Machine and in real friggin' life, that requires you to pull on a spring to activate it. A lever, maybe, but springs are internal components. They maintain tension. They are not things you grab and pull. Off to a great start here, Kyle. He's got a friend named Morris that loves to play the good old music from the day. I get what he's trying to say here, but it is phrased so awkwardly. I think what he means is the music from the good old days. The good old music from the day means nothing. It's nonsense. But the good old days is a common idiom. And as you'll see, absolutely butchering common idioms is a very, very Kyle Allen music trend. In the big march band. Okay, so here he either says big march band, as in big marching band, but 
not in the present tense and therefore incorrect, or big large band, which is obviously redundant. Kyle, this would be so much easier for me to rip you apart if I had captions. Come on, man. Creators, they lied to us, created us for the guy. Okay, this one's a bit more up to interpretation, but I don't think this is right. I get that he's playing off of Joey Drew's weird religious obsession expressed in one audio log and one audio log only back when the devs really didn't know what the game was going to be, but even then, it was always implied that Ink Bendy was the Dark Gods, and maybe I'm wrong about this. This is the one point that I would be willing to concede, but if you're, if I am correct, then he create you were created in service of a god that is you, and hence you were created to serve yourself. That doesn't make any sense. We were never supposed to exist in this dimensional plane. Okay, incoming multiverse-related nerdery here, so I'll make this quick. Dimensional plane is so awkward and also redundant. I get that he's trying to say that this plane of existence, our reality, is the third, or fourth, depending on who you ask, dimension, but the whole point of dimension and plane is that they are synonymous, both within the context of oh, this universe is a dimension and a plane, and also within the geometrical mathematical con con uh, uh, concept. Something that is in the second dimension is on two planes. Something that is in the third dimension has three planes. This dimensional plane makes no sense. Although again, that one's really esoteric, so if it was only this minor nerd error, I would pass up on that. But there's so many bad things in this song and the rest of his catalog. <laughs> Y'all know him. Y'all love him. He's always watching. He's always listening. I don't actually hate Recording Town. Of course, it's like, it's way worse than the other Bendy and the Ink Machine Chapter 2 song with recording in the name Recording Gold, uh, but it's not actually that bad, and the garbage animation is not at all Kyle's fault. However, it still has some issues, so let's get into those. He can sing and he can dance, he's known around the world from here to France. I could nitpick about how from here, presumably New York, based on the Bendy and the Ink Machine book, to France is less than half of the world, but I'm not CinemaSins, and I actually want to focus on semi-important stuff. This little devil is here to enhance the lives in your home, so take a chance. Important stuff like how there was no in-home streaming in the 30s when Bendy was created. In, in universe, of course. And there's interpretations of that line that say, oh, you go to the theater to see it, but it enhances the lives of the people in your home. And while that's technically true, it doesn't make a ton of sense either. And it's it's a stretch. He's one of a kind, and you can't deny this little guy just loves that sweet. Yeah, I can't deny that he loves that something. However, I don't know what he loves because the vocals trail off before the end of the line, as though Kyle got embarrassed halfway through. <laughs> oh my man, it is far too late for that. Take it from, make it upside down. Turn. Turn it upside down is the idiom. And it was so easy to. Same amount of syllables, same flow, but you just had to pick a different verb just for the hell of it, didn't you, Kyle Allen? Again, guys, more idiom butchering. We will see more of that. Wait, you've got the mic? You're going to sing? I thought we were here to see Bendy, not some creepy white guy who did choir for a semester in high school and now thinks he can write music. Speaking uh, purely in universe, of course. I really don't want to comment on the captions because those aren't Kyle's fault, but they have committed some major punctuation and spelling errors. Like, for example, in the context of dialing a phone, D-I-A-L, spelling it dial to rhyme with Nile, as in the river. Kyle, you need a better captions person. And hey, that rhymed. I was a poet and I was not aware of that fact. Eyes on him, he's screaming, doesn't have a chin, but he's slim and he's slim and an ink shaped rim. It's him with all limbs, Jim Shuley about Bim. What? What on the sweet green earth beneath my feet did I just hear? Were those, were those supposed to be song lyrics? There is so much more terrible in the rest of the song, but I am skipping to the next one before my brain actually implodes. 
Well, great. First he has to ruin my favorite horror game, then he has to ruin my favorite cartoon. Sorry, was that an environment from Bending the Ink Machine that I just saw in there? It 100% was, and he continues to distribute them throughout the opening. I actually really like this opening. The backwards speech as galaxies flash in Bill Cipher's eye is actually pretty cool and thematic for the character. However, splicing in pictures of Batam environments that have nothing to do with this makes no sense. Uh, there's an interesting thing to be said about easter egg distribution, and if he used easter eggs from multiple games, even the distributed, maybe one shot from Batam, one shot from Banaf, one shot from, I don't know, Legend of Zelda, I've never played Nintendo games, um, that would make more sense. But just flashing something from the same game, especially a game that has such an unrealistic and cartoony environment compared to, like, shots from Neil deGrasse Tyson's Cosmos, is so jarring and weird and really tells you that this guy has an awkward obsession with this game. Hey there! The name's Bill Cipher. Since you can't you cannot decipher. Crack my code, I'll be your dear old. Shake my hand, and we're sold. I absolutely hate the instrumentals in this song. Normally, I stay away from instrumental criticism because it's more subjective, but they are incredibly grating. If you stop focusing on the poorly written words for a second and listen to the background, it's just a bunch of stock dubstep sounds played way too loud. Also, code doesn't rhyme with old. Wanna make a deal for you, my friend, but you better pull through and keep your rent fantastic! My fingers were crossed, no take backs, now I'm the boss! Bill Cipher is a Faustian entity. The whole point of these creatures is that they're bound by their deals. They cannot cross their fingers. They cannot take backsies. The twist in these stories always comes that the deal was secretly twisted, which it is in the series, because Alex Hirsch knows how to write a freaking character, and Kyle Allen Music doesn't. If they could just break their bargains willy-nilly, it's, it's, it's not how that works. Although, that, that is actually a really fun and subversive idea. Maybe I should write that down. Story ideas. Faustian entity breaks bargain. Thanks, Kyle. I'm gonna steal that and, you know, actually do it well. A-X-O-L-O-T-L -L. Say that name will go to- That's not a name, it's a species. And you're not saying it, you're spelling it. Speaking of which, why did the captions have it at one word? It should be A, capital A, dash, capital X, dash, etc, etc. Life is all an illusion which only means that we should fill our lives with as much meaning as possible. If nothing matters, then everything matters equally, even if it matters very little. Checkmate, depressive nihilists. I guess it's never stated that in the series that saying axolotl isn't technically a spell, but still, calling it one feels overly reductive, and like, Bill Cipher, a being of inherent chaos, is being shoehorned into following traditional magic mechanics. Spell has a very specific inclination that this funny Dorito man does not follow. I'm back, baby, and you can't foretell! Travel through space and time! I'll destroy humanity with my mind! Yes. These lyrics are, by the most technical of definitions, rhymes. I will say nothing about their quality, except for the fact that this whole video is me criticizing the quality of his rhymes. And I'll break the fourth wall no matter how tall, in fact I'm just gonna break them all! Actually a cool line here. I always like fourth wall breaks and the suggestion of fourth wall breaks. I'd remove one sin, but I don't actually have a counter up, so we'll just have to keep track. On a related note, want to hear a nerdcore song that has another fourth wall reference slash subversion, does it much better, and is actually a good song? Slide into the void by the stupendium. I'll chuck something up on screen now. Now back to the pain. I'm Bill freaking Cypher, you better know my name. I am trying really hard not to criticize the captions, but they are so bad. They are missing words. They're actively words that just aren't in there. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when. When he breaks into this part, it's actually pretty cool because it's a fun reference to the show, it's a fun reference to the song, and it makes me think of my favorite Fat Rat song, which is also called We'll Meet Again. It also shows, much more aptly than I ever could, that this guy cannot sing. Land, come take my hand. 
I'm picking this one for one simple reason. I actually like it. So, and I wanted to give an example of a non-terrible Kyle song. It is the only one that's unironically on my music playlist. And while I think Stoops' influence certainly helps as they're featured, I don't know, It's there's something different about it. I do have one complaint, though. Uh, Kyle sings the chorus, and he's presumably playing Bertram as he names Bendyland as his world, and Bertram built Bendyland, blah blah blah, lore minutia. However, Stoops already plays Bertram in the verse before, and they are far, far better at it. So why couldn't you just let them sing the chorus too? Of course, Kyle wouldn't get to sing in his own song, but I, I say that as though that's a bad thing. Oh, also, Elsie Lovelock, the female voice actress in this song, goes hard. Her line delivery is unironically terrific. I'm going to stick a segment of that in here so y'all can just get the shivers. I have a lot to say about Kyle's other Bendy songs, but I've already done three, so this will be the last one. If I make a part two, I promise I'll do more in there. I took your boy and now he is mine. Come on down here, you might be in time. Descending deeper for the great big show. You should know it's dark below. Try and test your luck, I know you can't win. Don't wonder, because it's a sin. Another one that's not terrible. All of Kyle's best songs are collabs with other artists. He's like the George Lucas of nerdcore. Leave him to his own devices, he makes some terrible crap. But pair him up with someone competent, and bam, biggest toy franchise ever. The animation in this one is even pretty cool, even though the human characters look terrible. With But it's got some animatronics from old games showing up in a super interesting and well-done tribute to Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night. And I know it says it's an Ultimate Custom Night song, but Pizzeria Simulator is totally in there. Uh, my one main complaint, because there's always a complaint, because he's Kyle, he cannot make a perfect song. Um, the build-up in music in general is super good in this one, but the drop is the absolute worst part. It builds for a good minute, and I'm not gonna, like, fully clip the build, you can watch it yourself, but I will show you just, like, the pre-drop and the drop. Uh, but it just hits you with jumbled machine sounds and generic dubstep noises. So much more opportunity for melody and something meaningful during that part. Also, the, the straight-up best part is the monologue at the end, but that's not surprising because it's 90% just lines taken directly from Pizzeria Simulator. Another FNAF song with Back in the title. Sounds like someone's ripping off the stupendium three years before Back Together came out. Hmm? Also, in the intro to this one, Glitch Trip is absolutely just chilling. He is vibing at that table. Coming to your I signed up for five nights, not knowing that I'd get a big fright tonight. Here, he tries to do a rap breakdown, but this guy ain't JT Music, and the results are honestly hilarious. Huh? I thought it was alone, looking out for people getting in, but no, I'm both. Like, these robots want to kill me. These cameras are all I see. They're watching my every move to stuff me inside a suit and bleed me. Let's look up the definition of bleed, shall we? Lose blood from the body as a result of injury or illness. Or draw blood from someone, especially as a once common method of treatment in medicine. It's a big stretch to say that stuffing him inside a suit counts as bleeding him. He'd be more likely to die of suffocation or blunt force trauma than bleeding to death inside one of the funny animatronic suits. If it's spring-locked, it's a different matter, but we know for a fact that the only spring lock suits were uh, Golden Freddy and Golden Bonnie, both of which are occupied. Uh, also, bleed me does not rhyme with icy. Bonnie's backstage, looking enraged, he's gone insane. Most rappers go double time after a verse or two. Kyle Allen Music? Nah, he ain't about that. He goes half time because he can't maintain a fast pace for more than, like, what? Was it eight lines? Why did I accept this job for minimum wage? I mentioned JT Music a little while back. He already did this joke, and way better. I'm sick of seeing all these sinister faces. Why am I working for minimum wage? If Yeehaw! That yeehaw killed the last of my will to live. Who's your favorite cowboy of the West? Shooting down the bad guys, he's the best. I was gonna say that it shouldn't be shooting down, it should be shooting up, but I looked it up and apparently, like, shoot down and shoot up mean the same thing, despite being opposites linguistically. 
Weird. I guess that's just how idioms go sometimes. Bad to the bone when he's in the zone. Okay, first of all, you. Secondly, you just said he shot the bad guys, and then you said he was bad to the bone. Is he a good guy or not? Get your story straight here, Kyle. He's the star of the show. Bad to the bone and star of the show are not even close to rhyming. You can yell at me all you want about uh, vowels or whatever, but if something ends with a W and something ends with an N and you pronounce them that far apart, they don't rhyme. We know we can put them to the test. Who's the bandit that will save the day? A bandit is a criminal, and this is honestly more of a Joey Drew Studios thing, but... They never actually said that he was a good guy in the game, but you are saying that he is now, so I'm putting the onus on you, Mr. Kyle. A bandit is, by definition, a criminal. Unless he's a Robin Hood-type dealio, chances are he ain't gonna be a great guy. And his black hat and red bandana certainly support that. Purple, black, and red, all of which feature prominently on his design, are strong color indicators of an evil alignment. Look it up. There are charts for this. Nothing to say that hasn't already been said about the songs individually, except to point out that the lighting here makes him look like a ghost. Is that it, Kyle? Have you been dead for a century? Is that why you have a weird obsession with a game about 1930s cartoons, to the point of making 12 songs about it? This may be the worst one yet. It's the last one. Hang in there, guys. Welcome to our little show. I'm sure you are a fan. One line in, and there's already crap going wrong. When I first heard this song, I thought that Mortimer here said, I assure you we are fine. I thought it was a little weird, but it made sense because the puppet studio has been abandoned for a while, so him starting by letting the protagonist know that they were still alive makes some sense. Like, ooh, we're still here. But no, checking with the subtitles, he says, I'm sure you are fam. What? You need an article. A fan. A. You are sure I am a fan. Which also doesn't make sense because the show's been off the air for 30 years and this is a college journalist. They would not have been even alive when your thing was airing. Oh my god, this... Ugh. He literally sounds drunk during this line delivery. Or it's either that or the fact that he cannot do accents at all, which it's probably that one. It's a life to perform entertainment for the shows. Putting on performances is the only life we know. Just said that exact thing, but flipped around less than a verse ago. Do you think your listeners are goldfish? I mean, it's a bunch of little kids, so yeah, probably. And he's probably right. I guess you'll make do even with your tattered clothes. Wow, rude, you pompous ass Victorian guy. Also, again, the protagonist in Hello Puppets is a college reporter. They'd likely be wearing something at least passable. It's not like a homeless person just wandered into your old studio. There's nothing you can do to escape this zone. <sighs> zone is a genuine synonym for place, and so he's totally within his rights to use it here. But, and this is even more nitpicky than normal, it doesn't feel like the word choice fits for the, the character of Mortimer. Get your eyes on me or we attach your clothes. Stout, that character, is not a clone, she's a body double. There's a big difference. How much of a difference? Well, the difference between your genetically identical twin and the old teddy bear you've had since you were three. Get away from that and come back over here. I'm warning you, if you get closer, you will disappear. There's the implication of action here, but considering the video is just a shot of Mortimer, there's no visual evidence, and so it leaves you feeling like you missed something. And I don't even remember if that's a moment from the game that he specifically called out. Either way, it's still just like, oh, it feels like something's happening, but I'm not getting the full story. Come back now, you're supposed to play your role! How dare you disobey me, I will steal your soul! You were already planning to do that. In the immortal words of Hank Schrader, He made up his mind ten minutes ago. Yes, thank you, Mr. Heisenberger. That's how I feel after having to watch this much Kyle Allen music.
All right, I'd like to thank you all for watching to the end, and genuinely, I know it's such a cliche, but please like and subscribe, because I, I am probably not going to do another one of these videos if this doesn't get recognition, because it was a lot of work to edit, but if this video succeeds, then I know y'all want to see more, and so I will do more. Uh, there's so much more Kyle Allen music content, like the absolutely terrible Siren Head song that's playing in the background, um, that we can take a look at, or we could look at another bad nerdcore artist, or even a good nerdcore artist. You guys drop suggestions in the comments below, and, I mean, really, I think that's it. Please subscribe, I'm trying to get to 200 by the end of the school year. Uh, have a great 2023, and goodbye, beautiful people.